The reason you go to meetings is to give statements so that you can say what you think about a certain matter. And so, yes, oral statements is what the entire meeting's about. People get together to exchange ideas, so you have to do this through oral statements. It's possible, of course, to do it through written mm. papers, but you still have to enunciate. You have to tell the meeting what is in these written statements that you have submitted. So, yes, oral statements are important. It depends on the context. It depends on what you're trying to do. If I can try to roughly divide what the oral statements are, there's information statements. For example, if you're dealing with the prevention of violence against women, you can give a statement. Uh, for example, I would go there and say, in Finland we have these certain programs where we try to deal with the men who are having guilty of violence against women and try to get them into anger management or try to get them to understand what is happening and we've had a great amount of success for that or with that and in this way you're giving information on what your country or your organization or uh, whatever it is you're telling about it's information that can be used by that meeting in its work then there's attempts to influence for example if you have a draft resolution and you want certain things inserted into that. For example, this prevention of uh, violence against women, you want them to also address not only the victims of violence against women, but also the offenders. So you say that we shouldn't forget the offenders, the men, those who are guilty of that, so we should start talking about medical treatment, psychological treatment, etc. And you, what you do is you don't necessarily refer to your own experience, of course that's always helpful if you do, but you say, this is important because, and then you list the reasons for this. So you have this informational type statements where you tell what is happening, then you have these argument type statements, you argue for or against something, and then finally you have statements when you have the the heated work of the grafting of resolutions where one country or one delegation says we should refer to X whatever and your country's position or your organization's position is against this and you say no 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 we cannot refer to X because that has been shown to be unhelpful counterproductive etc we should instead refer to Y so you try to change the wording in this way. So much depends on the context and much depends on what you're trying to do. It's very hard to give an example of a good statement. It's much easier to give an example of a bad statement. Uh, could you give me that piece of paper you're holding in your hand? A bad statement would be when the chairman says, I now give the floor to the delegation of Finland. Then I start reading very quickly from my statement here saying that the position of Finland on this is XYZ and I would like to refer that we have just adopted new legislation in Finland. This is statute number 159 slash 2017 and in that, that new legislation we have done blah 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 and what you do is you speak very quickly, you have all kinds of references to legislation, to um, law, to policy programs, whatever and you do that very quickly off of a written statement. When I see that done, I basically shut down. I go out and drink coffee or whatever because these pre-prepared written statements are usually, frankly, very boring. I'm sorry to say that because they often have a lot of very useful information. But another thing that you may have noticed when um, I read my statement there very quickly. I didn't say one thing that I should have done. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, for giving me the floor. Since this is the first time my delegation has the opportunity to speak, I would like to congratulate you on your appointment. And through you, I would like to convey our respects to the other members of the Bureau, because we are sure that with your firm hand on the gavel and their wise and long experience, they will be able to bring this meeting to a successful conclusion. Now that may sound silly, but this is absolutely normal behavior. You have to begin the first statement that you make 
at these formal commission sessions or meetings of the conference of the state parties or the Congress, whatever, by congratulating the chairman on his appointment. It kind of sets the tone of respect for the chairman. It shows that you are prepared to cooperate, etc. And if a delegation or this first speaker on behalf of delegation doesn't say this, it's almost automatic that someone else from that delegation or that same speaker will request the floor again, Mr. Chairman, I would like to apologize for not having congratulated you on the first time that I spoke. So there's a certain amount of formality that goes with these. And there's good reasons for this because it kind of assures everyone that you know how things are done and you are playing the game the way that it should be played. So people will feel comfortable with that. Another thing about these prepared statements, when you go to a meeting, you should of course know what you're going to say, or at least have some kind of a general idea of what you're going to say. But if you read from a prepared statement, like unfortunately many people do, there's at least two things that will follow from that. One is you're going to read too fast. And all of the, sorry, not all of them, most of the UN meetings have simultaneous interpretation. The UN interpreters are absolutely marvelous. They, you can wake them up in the middle of the night, turn on the microphone, and they will then go into automatic and they will give a beautiful interpretation. Mm -hmm. But they're not miracle workers. If someone reads too fast, if someone throws in references to legislation, if someone has very complex legal text or technical text, etc., it's not that easy to interpret. So what you're trying to say very quickly will not be communicated into the other five working languages. A second thing that is very bad about a prepared statement is that if you simply read that the way it was written, you're not in any way showing that you're aware of what else has been done. I think that a model statement would, of course, you would first begin by congratulating the chairman or the chairperson on his or her election. And then you would say, I want to tell you about A, B, and C. So you're trying to tell them in advance that this is what you're going to be talking about. You try to keep your statement very long. Already, by the way, I've been going much too long on, in this statement. But you try to relate what you're telling to what other people have said. So, for example, if you're going to talk about anger management for male abusers of women, you could say, I would like to especially commend the distinguished representative of Canada for telling about the wonderful programs that they have done in their country. And in this way, you're showing that you have listened, which is very important. You're showing that you appreciate, you support what they're doing. And at the same time, it's kind of a, a, a tactic to get their support. Because if you say nice things about the Canadian delegation, maybe that when the Canadian delegation, they will say nice things about you. So what I think would be the best way to make a model statement is to have some bullet points, some items that you're going to be dealing with which I usually do when I am preparing for a statement is I have kind of sketched out what I want to say. And then when I listen to the discussion before I'm given the floor, I kind of fill in, um, China said this, uh, Zimbabwe said this, Brazil said this. And if they in some way support what I'm going to say, even indirectly, I try to make as many references as possible to them. And in this way, you try to reflect on what others have done, and it makes the meeting go more smoothly. It also helps the chairperson mm -hmm. to kind of remember, oh yes, that's right, Canadian did mention that, and China did mention that, and Zimbabwe did mention that. Thank you, Mr. Chairman.